Imagine being told that the universe, this vast, magnificent stretch of stars, galaxies, and time itself, has an expiration date. And not just that, but one dramatically sooner than we ever imagined. A groundbreaking study by a trio of Dutch researchers at Radboud University has turned the cosmic clock forward. They've concluded that the universe may decay in around 10 to the power of 78 years, far sooner than the previously predicted 10 to the power of 100 years. Their calculations, rooted in a bold reinterpretation of Hawking radiation, don't just challenge what we thought we knew. They open the door to a new understanding of the cosmos's ultimate fate. In this video, we'll get into what makes white dwarfs, neutron stars, and even black holes vulnerable to evaporation explain how density plays a crucial role in their decay, and examine the far-reaching implications this has on physics and our understanding of the universe's end. In 1975, Stephen Hawking introduced a theory that turned black holes into more than just cosmic vacuum cleaners. According to Hawking, black holes emit faint radiation due to quantum fluctuations at their event horizons. This Hawking radiation meant that black holes weren't truly eternal. They could gradually evaporate over vast timescales. But in a twist that deepens this theory, three researchers, black hole physicist Hono Falke, quantum expert Michael Wondrak, and mathematician Walter Van Soylikam, expanded Hawking's idea beyond black holes. Their earlier 2023 paper, proposed that Hawking-like radiation applies to any massive object with a gravitational field, including neutron stars and white dwarfs. That was just the beginning. In their latest work, published in the Journal of Cosmology and Astroparticle Physics, and available on RCAF, the team took things further. They tackled the question everyone was asking. If all massive objects evaporate through Hawking-like radiation, how long does it actually take? Their findings are nothing short of astonishing. White dwarfs, previously thought to endure for 10 to the 100th power years, would disappear in just 10 to the 78th power years. Neutron stars and stellar black holes, it turns out, have nearly identical lifespans of 10 to the 67th years. A surprising result since black holes possess stronger gravitational fields. The twist? Because black holes lack a solid surface, they end up reabsorbing part of their own radiation, slowing the decay process compared to neutron stars, which emit radiation more freely. This insight reframes our view of the universe's long goodbye. No object, no matter how massive or dense, is safe from this invisible, inevitable unraveling. Density, it seems, is the key factor. The denser the object, the slower the radiation, but everything, given enough time, will fade. With this expanded view of Hawking radiation, Falke, Vondrak, and Van Suilikam set out to calculate the lifespans of various cosmic structures under ideal conditions. No collisions, no cosmic interference, just pure Hawking-like radiation at work. The numbers they came up with compressed the universe's expiration timeline by unimaginable margins. According to their study, white dwarfs, the embers of sun-like stars, evaporate in 10 to the 78th years. That alone reshapes what we thought was the longest phase of cosmic evolution, the degenerate era. Even more fascinating are the team's additional estimates. Neutron stars and stellar mass black holes both decay in 10 to the 67th years. But they didn't stop there. For comparison and a touch of whimsy, they calculated that the moon and even a human body would evaporate via this process in 10 to the 90th years. These are, of course, idealized numbers. In reality, the moon and humans would be destroyed by countless other processes long before then. But the calculations illustrate the theoretical power and universality of Hawking-like radiation. The study reminds us that nothing, not even the coldest, most inert remnants of stars, are immune to decay. 
Over time, even the very building blocks of matter will vanish. This compresses the final acts of the universe, the era when only degenerate matter remains, into a much shorter window than once believed. And with this comes a profound implication, the heat death of the universe, the moment when entropy reigns supreme and no usable energy remains, may arrive far sooner than expected. While still incomprehensibly distant from today, the end isn't as infinitely far away as we once assumed. This revelation doesn't just revise the numbers on a cosmic calendar. It opens the door to solving one of the greatest puzzles in modern physics, uniting the microscopic rules of quantum mechanics with the grand architecture of general relativity. For decades, physicists have wrestled with this divide. General relativity explains how gravity shapes the motion of planets, galaxies, and the expansion of the universe. Quantum mechanics, on the other hand, governs the world of particles, probability, and uncertainty. Yet gravity remains stubbornly absent from quantum theory. That's where this new research begins to make waves. By extending the concept of Hawking radiation to neutron stars and white dwarfs, objects governed by both quantum properties and gravitational fields, Falca, Wondrak, and von Suilikam offer a unique window into how these two domains might connect. Their reinterpretation implies that quantum effects, like particle pair production near gravitational horizons, can occur even outside black holes. This supports the idea that space-time itself might be inherently quantum in nature. It's a subtle but profound step toward what physicists call a theory of quantum gravity. Concepts like loop quantum gravity, which models space-time as a network of discrete loops, or string theory, which imagines particles as tiny vibrating strings in higher dimensions, have long proposed ways to bridge the gap. But direct evidence remains elusive. Now, by treating Hawking-like radiation as a more universal phenomenon, the Radboud team's work may provide a theoretical testing ground for such frameworks. In parallel, their findings force us to redraw our map of the universe's distant future. Traditionally, Cosmologists divide the universe's life into five eras. The radiation era, when light dominated. The matter era, when stars and galaxies formed. The degenerate era, when stars died and only remnants remained. The black hole era, dominated by evaporating black holes. And the dark energy era, a final epoch of cold emptiness and decay. The degenerate era, once thought to last until around 10 to the power of 100 years, has now been significantly shortened. With white dwarfs expected to evaporate in 10 to the 78th years, this stage may pass far faster than we assumed. Even more striking is the implication for the black hole era. If stellar black holes decay in 10 to the 67th years, their reign is shorter too. The black hole era, once envisioned as a defining chapter of the universe's twilight, now plays a more fleeting role. Ultimately, these revisions compress the universe's endgame. Instead of lingering for a near eternity in a slow fade, the cosmos may enter its final silent phase sooner than expected, a realm where even the last particles of matter dissolve into faint radiation. This isn't just theoretical curiosity. It reshapes our understanding of what the universe is doing now, what forces are silently at work across eons, and where it's ultimately headed. It also reaffirms a core truth of science. With every deeper look into the universe, we're not just learning about space, we're learning about the fundamental fabric of reality itself. Thank you for joining us on this journey through time and theory. If this blew your mind even a little, you're not alone. Stay curious, stay grounded, and keep looking up. Because even in a fading universe, wonder never evaporates.